companies in the entire world dedicated to the distribution and research of medicine. It all started in 1668 when Frederick Merck bought his first small drugstore in Germany. The company finally grew in Germany and moved to the United States a little before World War I. As a company that were dedicated to producing new medicines for illnesses and educating the public about these drugs. These legal documents spell out what Merck knew and when they knew it. In clinical trials during the late 90s, the company tested whether their anti-inflammatory drug Vioxx could prevent cognitive decline in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Life-threatening risks were documented but were never reported to the FDA or the public. The company found a threefold increased risk in mortality and failed to see a safety signal. By scientific standards, uh, this is a major safety issue. Dr. Bruce Pesetti and colleagues at the University of Washington reviewed numerous legal documents from litigation involving Merck and Vioxx. In a published report in 2004, Merck reported that Vioxx is, quote, generally well tolerated by the elderly patients in our study. But this internal company document tells a different story. It reveals Merck knew about an increased risk in mortality associated with Vioxx, and they knew this in 2001. If these findings had been made public back in 2001, uh, many fewer people would have taken Vioxx, and because it is associated with an increased risk of mortality and uh, of heart attacks, many fewer people would have been harmed. Trials like these clearly need independent data and safety monitoring committees to protect the patients. that one of the biggest things that I saw that took place was when we would get marketing promotional materials for example a sales piece would come out and have a bar chart or information from a clinical study on it that raised concern with the physicians say uh, a number of physicians would start to complain about the excessive number of CNS side effects, for example, then what we would see is the next marketing period after reps had disclosed that during a district meeting or some kind of a pool meeting that we had, that marketing piece would come out and would be revised and that bar chart would be changed or that, you know, specific information would be altered so that perhaps the CNS side effects were now broken out to dizziness and, you know, the various other side effects that would be included in the central nervous system section. So it didn't show quite so drastically how severe the side, effect, the side effects were. I wasn't being encouraged after a period of time to have full disclosure with my doctors. In fact, we were starting to be encouraged to minimize more and more and to skillfully sidestep the concerns and objections of physicians. And I knew that that created a dangerous environment for the patient and I saw firsthand several circumstances where my minimization of side effects or misinforming a physician had actually resulted in the patient being damaged and or killed. When did Merck start realizing that maybe, or did they know before with clinical trials this could happen? When did this trial get sticky? Well, we have testimony that goes back to uh, uh, five or six years before they even uh, had the drug on the market where they were having troubles, where they were seeing cardiovascular side effects turn up. So they knew about it pretty early. Mm -hmm. It was proved in 1990. has been doing damage but, control on this drug for for years. For, oh, while well, they continue to sell it. Oh yeah, oh yes, yes. They they had a big trial that showed it uh, it was five times more dangerous than a leave with heart mm -hmm. attacks and they kept reaffirming as they called it the cardiovascular safety despite this trial. So they just blindly were told 
who do you, who do you think made these decisions? Their, their lawyers, the, um, the CEO? How, where did that come from? Well, we do know that some of the key marketing decisions did go up to the CEO. We have evidence of that, yes. Could they be culpable for, like, crimes against humanity almost? <laughs> I know it's a heavy term, but... Well, they have they've have three sets of fines. They, they, there's, there's the settlement, and then they were have settled with the, the states and the federal government for various, various marketing frauds. So, uh, but nobody, uh, uh, I don't think anybody was ever fired, or no personal blame was ever given to anybody. FDA was no longer serving the position for the people that they were supposed to serve to protect our interests and to make sure that dangerous drugs were not being released onto the marketplace. And in fact, they became the buds of the pharmaceutical industry. I heard Life. Recent publications have revealed safety problems with the drug Vioxx. And according to your testimony, the manufacturer delayed communications of known risk to the FDA and minimize those risks in its communication. So Dr. Kassebaum, how did it do this? Um, what the manufacturer uh, selected certain statistical tests that it knew um, or, or that have been shown to uh, mask uh, the types of outcomes and the uh, adverse events that were showing up in the trials and by choosing those statistical tests in its presentation to the FDA uh, led the risks of the drug to be uh, underestimated uh, by the FDA regulators who would then read that report. In 2004, Merck was forced to pull Vioxx off the market when several people in the new trial entitled Approve suffered heart attacks and stroke. Soon after an investigation ensued, internal emails and documents surfaced and showed that Merck knew of the adverse effects of Vioxx, but covered them by using marketing techniques and threatening scientists to keep quiet. The Wall Street Journal published the emails and the lawsuits flooded in. So what is Merck doing? How much are, one, how much have they been damaged financially? I mean, are they going to go? Uh, Merck has been in business since 1668, uh, and uh, I think they're the oldest corporation in the world. Uh, I, they're in no danger of going out of business, but they have paid a huge, huge price. They have paid a huge price. Is this business as usual, as you were saying before, well, other companies? Because they're there to make money and profit. On, the shareholders have to be kept happy. Unfortunately, I uh, got countless letters and emails from people saying, well, nothing unusual about uh, what you've described in the book. These are, these are reps or pharmaceutical salespeople. And uh, unfortunately today, um, I think primarily because of direct-to-consumer advertising, it's, it's hugely expensive to market a drug. And so there's a huge amount of pressure to get something out there. The wisdom of allowing companies to control and analyze the data from their studies really comes under question. Indeed, these practices do come under question when just one life is lost, let alone thousands. The Vioxx scandal is a cautionary tale. You, your friends, loved ones, and any person who has ever been prescribed a drug is vulnerable to the leniency of the FDA. And we are all at the mercy of the vast amount of control these multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical companies have obtained. The question is, what can we do about it? Stop taking our life-saving drugs. Stop accepting millions of dollars contributions from the drug companies like Merck, which goes to the necessary medical research. If Merck wasn't profiting the same amount, but they were saving more lives, would they still be in the pharmaceutical production field? Is losing thousands of lives simply collateral damage for saving millions and making a buck while doing so?